Good evening, church. It's great to see you. We have so much to celebrate. Will you stand with us as we sing and give joy? Sing this out now. Well, joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. Oh, 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 oh. joy to the world, the same. Sounding joy, repeat, repeat the sounding. Oh, 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 the world with truth. And grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love and wonders of his love and Sing this out. Sing, hark the herald angels sing. Glory to the newborn King. Peace on earth and mercy mild. God and sinners reconciled. Joyful all ye nations rise. Join the triumph of the skies. Angelic foes proclaim Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King. Take the newborn Prince of Peace. Hail the Son of Righteousness. Light to 
against us. You are strong to save in your mighty way, King of heaven, come. Oh, King of heaven, praise we this morning or this evening. You can go ahead and be seated if you will. Good afternoon. We'd like to welcome you to our Christmas Eve service to Adventure Church. My name is Shane Hargrave. I'm the, the lead pastor here. We are so glad that you are with us today. How many of for you is Christmas your favorite holiday? Ooh. I love Christmas. My HOA, you know, if it wasn't for them, I'd have my lights on until April. But uh, we are so glad to have you. This is such a meaningful moment for us today as we celebrate the birth of our Savior. Uh, just a couple of quick things as we get ready to continue to worship. If you uh, did not have a chance to pick up communion, if you'd like to take partake of communion with us in just a few seconds, it's at the back table there. You can just get one anytime during the service. If uh, you want a light, we're going to do a candle lighting at the end of our service, they're back in the basket just outside the doors today. Uh, the third thing is, is we would love to get to know you just a little bit more. And if you're a first-time guest with us today, again, we, we're grateful that you're with us. If you would be willing to fill out a first-time Connect card, we will do our best to connect with you and to let you know how, what the next steps, if you're interested in being more involved here, finding out more about us. Uh, <clears throat> are you guys ready to worship again? Awesome. Let's, uh, let's continue our worship uh, after we pray. God, I just thank you so much for my friends, and I thank you for the season. We pray today that you would inspire us, that you would change us, that you would challenge us as we remember the birth uh, of Jesus, who is God in flesh. Lord, whatever burdens we have, whatever challenges we have, whatever uh, family messes that we've come from today, we know that you are King of kings and Lord of lords, and it's because of your birth that we have the hope that um, someday that there will be peace on earth, peace in heaven, no more hardships, no more trials, no more struggles, because we will be in your presence. Lord, we love you. 
We pray that this, these praises we sing today would be a pleasing aroma to you. Uh, our offer of sacrifice through our worship. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Will you stand with us again? Let's uh, sing this out. We have a lot to celebrate. And here's a challenge for you. While shepherds kept their watching For silent flocks by night Behold, throughout the heaven There shone a holy light And the shepherds feared and trembled When two above the earth Rang out the angel chorus That hailed our Savior's birth that hailed our Savior's birth. Come on now, go and tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go and tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Down in the our humble Christ was born And God sent a salvation That blessed Christmas born Oh, come on, go Tell it on the mountain Over the hills and everywhere Go, tell it on the mountain That Jesus Christ is born mountain over the hills and everywhere go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born oh you got to go tell it on the mountain now he made me a watchman upon the city wall and if I am Christian I am the least of all yes I am the least of all oh, come on now and go I tell it on the mountain over Tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Oh, come on and go. I tell it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere. Go. Tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Go ahead and be seated, if you will. As Pastor Shane just mentioned, we were going to take uh, we're going to take communion together. But I wanted to to quickly uh, read you uh, uh, a devotional thought that uh, came to me not too long ago, and I wanted to share it with you because I think it pers gives you great perspective with regards to who Jesus was as a baby and what he's done for us here on earth. A college professor, his name is Doug Redford, he wrote this. He said that many of our Christian or Christmas carols picture the beauty and the innocence of Jesus as a baby. Like, uh, for instance, the first verse of Away in a Manger is, um, tells how the, the, the little Lord Jesus laid down his sweet head. And the first verse of Silent Night describes the infant Jesus as tender and mild and sleeping in heavenly peace. And all of that changed 
when Jesus reached manhood. That sweet head was pierced with a crown of thorns. It was forcibly laid down on a, a Roman cross. And the once tender hands and feet were pierced by nails. In the second verse of Away in a Manger, we sing the words, the cattle are lowing, the poor baby wakes, but little Lord Jesus, no crying he makes. And whether or not the infant Jesus did in fact cry, we know that the adult Jesus did. He did cry as the cross drew near, he wept as he looked over the city of Jerusalem after what we call his triumphal entry into the city. It talks about it in Luke. And Hebrews says that Jesus offered up prayers and petitions with fervent, fervent cries and tears to the one who could save him from death. But listen to this, Jesus didn't come to be saved from death. He came to save us from death. He died so we could live. Thus was fulfilled the angelic message given to Joseph, who was wondering how to handle the delicate situation of Mary's pregnancy. You know, the special child to whom Mary would give birth will save his people from their sins, as it talks about in Matthew. And it's often said that Jesus is the reason for the season, and that is true. It, it is also true that we are a crucial part of that reason. We, sinful human beings, are why Jesus' sweet head was eventually crowned with thorns and why his hands and feet were, were pierced by nails. Christmas offers us a time to remember Jesus' unique entrance into our world by, by means of, of virgin birth. Communion offers us a time to remember what happened beyond the manger. The birth was just the opening of God's great gift to humanity. And the real giving came at the cross where Jesus offered himself as the once for all sacrifice to deliver us from the bondage of sin. His death was the means to a, a heavenly peace that allows us to keep and to sleep, awaken, and live each day as forgiven people. Before he was crucified during his last supper, he took bread and he gave thanks and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after the cup, after the supper, he took the cup and he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood which is poured out for you. Drink this in remembrance of me. And when you're ready, give him the thanks for what he's done for us. Take your communion, and as you remember that here on earth, what he did for us, it all began with that one holy night. Him 
Christ the Lord. Oh, sing, choirs of angels, sing in exaltation. Oh, sing, all ye citizens of heaven. Stand with us and sing this. Our Lord, now we greet thee. Born this happy morning, Jesus, forevermore be thy name adored. Word of the Father, now in flesh appearing. Oh, come. Go ahead and be seated, if you will. Glory to God in the highest. Peace on earth and a good will toward men. <sighs> Tobias! There you are. Got the coffees. Land of Goshen, that line was long. <laughs> All right, cup of coffees. Tobias, here's yours with extra goat milk. Had to smell that the whole way here. Thank you so much. And I have a juniper tea. Which one of you guys had the juniper tea with two extra shots of honey, huh? You look like the juniper. And an extra large boba tea for me, because I made the run. <laughs> and it's all good. Ira, if you will. Guys, where's all the sheep? Zeke, come back. No, thank you. We're not making this up. Oh, you're not making this up? Oh, golly gee, the name it. Then maybe I will believe that what? A gaggle of angels came down? Technically, they're called heavenly hosts. Not the time, Tobias. It's always the time for proper nomenclature. That's the motto I live by. Fine. A heavenly host of little cherubs. No, 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 no. Not little. They were humongous. <laughs> yeah, Ira buckled like a newborn lamb. I might have a new concussion. I taste pennies right now. Okay. Come on, ladies. Sweepy. Zeke, we're leaving the sheep. Bathsheba. Bathsheba. The angel told us where to find the Messiah. Figures. Figures. Figures the angels would tell you and not me. You want to know why? Because I am always, 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 always left out of things. I am left out every time. That's not true. It is so true. How about the time that I stayed back and I watched the sheep while you all went to go chase those wolves for that farmer? And what did you get in return? A year's worth of free olive oil! You guys remember that olive oil? Remember when we put them on those crackers? Oh. <laughs> hey! Hey! <laughs> Hey, how about the time that I missed out on that amazing water spot at the Sea of Galilee because I was searching for herbs for Ira's weak stomach? Can we just say my stomach was disappointed in me? Fine. 
Fine, 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 fine. Then riddle me this. How about the time that my best friend forgot to tell me about Tobias's surprise birthday dinner for some strange oversight of, oh, forgetting that I exist? I am left out of everything, so why shouldn't I be left out of this? The Messiah. I guess he's just leaving me out too. Get off me! Stop it! Not the face! Leave me alone! Stop! Think! Stop! You stop! Come here! Listen to me! Why? Listen to me! Listen. I'm sorry. I'm sorry you missed out on so much. That's on us. But today, in the town of David, the Savior was born to, to us. To all of us. I can't let you miss out on that. Well, better not keep that baby waiting. Idea, pit stop for more boba teas on the way? <laughs> not a chance. You know, I really love that uh, skit about the, the other shepherd that we saw first in that because there are a lot of us today who feel like we've been left out, that we're on the outside looking in, like we've missed some of the most important things in life or that we just don't belong. Have you ever felt that way? Have you ever felt maybe like you're not good enough, your past defines you? This Christmas season, a season of joy and thanksgiving and hope and beautiful twinkling lights, but when your family gets together, it looks more like Christmas vacation than it does Charlie Brown's Christmas. Maybe that's where you are today. Have you ever heard of the Island of Misfit Toys? We've been on this in this series for the last couple of weeks talking about the Island of Misfit Toys. A, place for imperfect people, and that starts with me. The Island of Misfit Toys first appeared to us in 1964 at a TV station or a TV special called Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, and there you find this Island of Misfit Toys. It is an island filled with the odd, the ridiculous, the challenged, the different. It's a place for toys that no one else wants that have an opportunity to find a home until they find a place where they'll be loved forever. And we all know that being different is not good always. We learn that on the playgrounds of our elementary school days, right? It's rarely ever celebrated when we're different. But these toys are unique. They're, they're not like any other toys in the world. Maybe the greatest oddball of these misfit toys is a reindeer by the name of Rudolph. Now, Rudolph was born into a prominent family. His dad was Donner, who was one of the eight reindeer that would pull the sleigh of Santa. Uh, but he was born different than all of the other reindeer. He had a red nose that would glow. And although he was from a prominent family, he was an outcast. He soon discovered that his parents were disappointed in him. And we know kind of how that went. All of the other reindeer used to laugh and call him names. They'd never let poor Rudolph join any reindeer games. And so Rudolph, knowing that he's different, not being accepted by anyone else, taking his uniqueness, he decides that rather than to always be on the outside looking in, that he's going to go somewhere where he can find a place to fit in. And so he meets an a, a elf by the name of Hermie who doesn't want to be an elf, he wants to be a dentist, and he also meets this Yukon dude who has the ability to find treasure. And they go off on this grand adventure because if he can't fit in, he's going to fit out somewhere else. 
And what ends up happening is they come to this island of misfit toys. Now, there's just like in any good story, there's tension in this story, right? Because after Rudolph has left, he's gone to this place where no one loves these toys, where everyone is an outcast. The drama increases. Santa discovers that there's a thick fog that's moved into the area, so thick that he can't see through it. If he can't see through the fog, then he can't fly his sleigh. Christmas is in danger of being canceled for the first time. And they don't know what they're going to do. A hero world will emerge from the most unlikely of sources. And it shocks all of the other reindeer. Little Rudolph, whose nose is red, glows in the dark, and the light from his nose will dispel the darkness and show Santa the way. Now, isn't it wonderfully fascinating what light does to darkness? Have you ever been in a dark room and you've walked in and your light dispels the darkness around you and you can see? I think that many of us know what it's like to be uh, in, lost in darkness. We're not sure which way to go. We don't know how to get out of the darkness. It might be depression. It might be a, a conversation that you're having. It might be your, uh, you know, my wife always says that um, we put the fun in dysfunction and maybe you do too this Christmas season. And you wonder how you're going to find happiness, acceptance, how, it's going to, how are you ever going to transition from being on the outside looking in to the inside looking out. Did you know this year 67% of those surveyed discovered, uh, described that their holiday stress levels as moderate to extreme? 52% of people stu- uh, surveyed report an increase in anxiety this Christmas season. 41% of those surveyed report an increase in depression at Christmas time. 66% report an increase in financial stress. But not only that, people feel alone at Christmas. It highlights and heightens our idea of what Christmas is supposed to be. It's supposed to be part of family. It's supposed to be acceptance. It's supposed to be fitting in. But people feel more and more alone this Christmas season. There's a study done last year of the percentage of Americans experiencing holiday loneliness by generation. Overall, 50, 55% of Americans experience loneliness at Christmas season. In that study, you will be shocked maybe to know that the, the group that experiences the most loneliness are the Gen Zers. 75% of Gen Zers feel alone. Millennials is 64%. Gen Xers, which is the greatest generation ever. That, that, that was in the study. I'm just telling you what the study said. 50% of Gen Zers or Gen Xers feel alone, and 39% of baby boomers feel alone. Friends, have you ever felt unwanted, unloved, like your life is a mess, like you are defined by your mistakes and your failures in your past? Have you ever felt like the outsider looking in? Because this Christmas season, I think that we're all looking for a home to belong to, a place where we can rest, a place that we are accepted for who we are. And I wonder if this Christmas season, if hope will come from a place we least expect. Now listen, we all know that suffering is a part of life, that There are really three reasons we suffer in life. We suffer because of our own decisions. We suffer because of other people's decisions that we can't control. And we suffer because we live in a broken world. Now, that broken world thing is a real doozy, right? Because it's what leads to death. It's the things that are outside of any of our control. Sickness, disease, hopelessness, tsunamis, hurricanes, uh, tornadoes, death, cancer. And it really started at the beginning. God created this perfect world without hardship, without sickness, without relational disasters, without aging, without death. But because God loved us so much, He gave us free will. And love must always be a choice, friends. He allowed us the opportunity to either choose to follow Him or to follow our own desires. And God told us that if we wanted to have life and life to the full, we should follow Him. But we chose our own way, and life is filled with consequences good and bad. 
And the consequence of our decision to not follow God opened up death and decay into the world. Romans chapter 6, verse 23 says, For the wages of sin is death. What is a wage? A wage is something you earn. But God would provide another way because He loves you so much, He didn't want the story to end there. But the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord, Paul writes, the the second half of that verse. Jesus is hope. His name would be Emmanuel, which means God with us. God wanted to be with us even as we rejected Him. And this is His story. At that time, the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. This was the first census taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria. All returned to their own ancestral towns to register uh, for the census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged, who was now expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for them. That night there were shepherds staying in their fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared to them, among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them, don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem in the city of David, and you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth lying in a manger. Suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. When the angels had returned to heaven, The shepherds said to each other, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph, and there was the baby lying in a manger. Hope came to the most unexpected of places. The hero doesn't descend, doesn't come from Jerusalem, but from a sleepy little village. There's no royal parades. There's no fanfare. There's no heralds playing the royal trumpets. The Messiah isn't born to king and queen, but to a young teenage first-time mother and her husband. The Savior doesn't arrive to plush accommodations, but is born in a lowly stable, and his bed is a stone trough. His first guests are not noble dignitaries, but animals and shepherds. Well, isn't that unexpected? No one saw that coming. He doesn't bring a sword, but He comes, and with Him, He brings love and grace and joy and peace and hope. And the most surprising thing about all of this and all of this story is that God becomes flesh. As Max Lucado writes, Jesus humbled Himself. He went from commanding angels to sleeping in the straw, from holding stars to clutching Mary's finger. Why? Because that's what love does. It puts the beloved before itself. Philippians, Paul writes, Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. God became flesh. The mightiest king of all gave up his lofty position in heaven to become a slave. He who had held stars in his hands will allow himself to be held in the fragile arms of a young teenage mom. And he who commanded angels will allow himself to grow under the leadership of a stepdad who is struggling with his faith. He was born for me. He was born for you. In 1943, one of the most iconic songs of Christmas was written and produced. A guy by the name of Bing Crosby. Now, I don't know why we don't have Bing in the top 10 list of names given to babies this year, but we don't. Bing Crosby is his name. It was in the midst of World War II when millions of American soldiers were away from their families fighting in the trenches in Germany and in Japan and all over the world. And what they wanted most was peace on earth, to be with family, to be home, for life not to be chaotic, to find some semblance of peace, to know joy in a way that was supernatural. What they wanted was to be home for Christmas. And so he wrote this song, I'll be home for Christmas, 
because it was the heart of every person who was away from home and all of those who were waiting for their loved ones to come home. I don't know where you are this Christmas season. I don't know how far you are or how mess, much of a mess your life is or how disenfranchised you feel or how broken you feel or how hopeless. And maybe your Christmas is wonderful. Maybe you are, have created this Christmas tradition that people come from all over the country to be part of your Christmas family and it goes off perfect. I'm going to guess that none of us have experienced that. Because the thing is, is the thing that leads to depression many times at Christmas is high expectations of what Christmas should be. And our expectations are never going to be met by reality. Except, gentlemen, in the woman that you married. Why don't you turn to her right now and say, I'm so lucky to have you. Now, ladies, why don't you just turn back and say, you know what, it was my calling to suffer for you. Listen, what I want you to know is regardless of your past, regardless of your heartache, regardless of your brokenness, regardless of how messed up your family is, regardless of how different your Facebook life is from your real life, there's room at the stable for you. This church is an island of misfit toys, starting with me. We're all broken in need of grace, of having true connection and true purpose and true hope. In this Christmas season, maybe what the Lord wants to tell you is that your life matters, that you have a purpose, that there is something greater inside of you, a greater story that's yet to be lived out. Because here's what I believe with all of my heart, that you were created for a purpose and for such a time as this. And your best is not behind you, your best is before you. My wife loves to say, if you have a pulse, you have a purpose. And I believe this Christmas, there's a purpose for you. One of my favorite movies is It's a Wonderful Life. Every year, I cry when I see that movie. It's mostly allergies, but... Do you know why it's so meaningful to me? It's meaningful because it reminds us of a life that has been blessed. Most of the time, all we see before us is not our life. What we see is our mess. Most of the time, all we can focus on is on how imperfect things are. And the truth is, is that God created you for a great adventure. And He's written a story about your life. And just because you can't see the end of the story doesn't mean your story is over. It may mean that a chapter is ending, but the rest of the story is yet to be written. So hold on. You've got to believe because the miracle of Christmas is the miracle of God with us, and God is with you, 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 and God is with you. Emmanuel means God with us, and even when we are far from God, He is still with us, whispering in our ear, it's time to come home because there's room at the stable, at the manger for you. Won't you meet Him today? Won't you let go of all the foolishness of the expectations of what life should be like? And won't you believe that the best is yet to come? Because that, my friends, is the Christmas miracle. That this life is not all that there is. If you've never accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, what better time than to celebrate And give your life to Jesus at this Christmas season when God became flesh. If you need prayer, listen, we all messed up. We're all broken. We're all flawed. The only two perfect people in this world are me and my wife, and sometimes I worry about her. (laughs) There's room at the manger for you. There's hope for you. And this is a place, an island of misfit toys, a place for imperfect people. If you need prayer today, we're going to have decision counselors at the front of the stage. And I just invite you to come as we get ready to sing again. And when we hold our candles in just a little bit, 
it's a reminder that every life is a light and every candle is a story yet to be told because, friends, the best is yet to come. Let's pray and then let's continue to worship. God, I just thank you so much for your grace and for your hope. And I don't know what's going on in this room today. I don't know what marriages are in trouble, what families are struggling, what medical diagnoses are looming. I don't know about those who have lost loved ones this year, who feel alone, maybe who are separated from family this time of year. I don't know uh, the challenges in our schools or the challenges in the marketplace, uh, that the financial pressure that is bearing down on folks as inflation continues to rise. But I know this, in the midst of our hopelessness, you are there that you are greater than our challenges, that you are greater than our failures, that you are greater than our hopelessness because Jesus came, He emptied Himself of the glory and the regality and the perfectness of heaven to come to this earth as a little baby. Not for a grand adventure, not for a cosmic joy ride, but because He loved me and He loved every person in this world. So, Lord, help us to find You today in this Christmas season amongst the wrappings and the tree trimmings and the eggnog and watching our favorite Christmas movies. Lord, please speak to our hearts. Remind us what truth is and who hope is. We love you, Jesus, and we just pray that you would bring peace to us and that there's room at the end for us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. as we continue in worship. Him whose birth the angel 
angels sing Come adore on bended knee Christ the Lord, the newborn King turn it on at the bottom, and we're going to sing Silent Night. This song was written in 1817 or about there. Uh, the author was a priest that was walking around a war-torn, uh, broken town, and he was so upset that he went home and he penned the words to Silent Night. As we sing this song, I want to remind you that even in darkness that there is light, a hundred years later during the World War I, Germans and English put down their weapons on Christmas Eve and sang this song together in the midst of conflict because Jesus is the hope of the world. Now, this is Patty on my left. Patty, why don't you wave to everybody? <laughs> when she raises her candle, you raise your candle high, okay? Let's sing Silent Night together and remember that there is peace in the midst of chaos because of Jesus. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round young virgin mother and child. so tender and mild sleep in heavenly peace sleep in heavenly peace silent night oh i 
Jesus, Lord, at thy birth. Jesus, Lord, at thy birth. Merry Christmas, everybody. Are you guys ready for some hot cocoa and cookies? I was really enthusiastic from the two in the front row. Hey, we want you to join us for coffee or uh, hot chocolate and cookies. We're glad that you're here. Uh, every Sunday, we worship at 10 a.m. here. Uh, if you are a first-time guest or maybe not as familiar with us, we're actually going through a name change, and so this uh, it, next week will be the last week that this church family is known as Adventure Church. Starting on January 7th, we will be Compass Life Church, and we hope that you'll come and be a part of that great launch as we continue the next chapter of ministry here together. Friends, thank you for coming. I just want to give you a blessing as we get ready to end the night. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face towards you and give you His peace. Merry Christmas, my friends. We hope to see you soon. God bless. Mm -hmm.